and give a demonstration of what a, a um, for us, it's a four hour segment looks like. So from beginning to end. So basically there's kind of three parts to it. The first part is roll call. Roll call or the classroom that they are virtually in for us is typically Zoom. So everybody logs into Zoom and roll call is taken. After roll call is taken, then there are two uh, different platforms that we use to do the theory and submit work. The first being pivot point, we are- That's okay. I'm sorry. We are a pivot point school. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. well, you're good, but I'm just wanna make sure that Gary, he, he, he muted his, go oh. right ahead, continue. So the first platform that we use is pivot point labs. So typically that is what we use for tracking their time as well. So when they go on to Zoom, they also go simultaneously on to Pivot Point Lab and they start to, they click track your, your time um, basically. And so then uh, theory commences, everybody has a tablet or a laptop at home. We do supply a tablet to all, tablet to all, all students. And so then the teacher starts with her theory lesson. So just like a classroom, you know, they're sitting in a Zoom very much like we are and she has control of the screen and she is demonstrating or going through the theory uh, PowerPoints, as if you will, and teaching theory, just like we're having a conversation now. Uh, and that goes on pretty much for the, for the uh, first couple of hours, I would imagine, it depends on subject matter. And then after that, there are a series of things that happen with Pivot Point that we use. There's uh, show you know, there's uh, testing, there's um, discussion questions and so on and so forth. And then the second platform that we use, and I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with it, it is Canvas. And in Canvas, that's where a student would go for notifications. Um, they could go to submit their homework. They can go to submit um, their discussions, things like that. So uh, I think Pivot Point has the ability to do some of that. But for our school, we just, um, we've always used Canvas. So we more so integrated uh, Pivot Point Lab into our application with uh, Canvas. And so basically, uh, as simple as it sounds, that's really how it is. I mean, it's basically you're in the classroom only virtually, but everything that goes on is the same, you know? So that's the theory, it's the questions, it's, you know, and the teacher is there the whole while, like we are here and um, you know, available for the students while they're doing whatever assignment it is that they're doing, just like a classroom. Basically, that's kind of where I think we ended. Is that correct? Yeah, I, yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so today, Leah, can you, can you recap us where, because I know that there, there was some additional information that, um, that the um, committee had re maybe requested for you and then when I, we looked in the, the pack, um, I, I kind of was kind of questioning the information, but I wanted to speak out to you first. Is there any other committee members have any questions for, for Leah before, um, you know, or after my question? I mean, cause I want everybody to make sure their questions are heard. Okay, so so Leah, can you can you recap where we we kind of we left off there? Lou said we left off, and before we um, move forward with this subject, I would like to to um, to get some more information. I'm because I know there was some information that was requested of you. Hi hey Gwen, yeah, that, that's correct. Uh, so I think Lou did a great recap of what was talked about last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, there were a few questions that were thrown out last meeting. Um, I think board member Stanton and I had, um, I think we were both maybe mistaken. We had, we had remembered back when we were talking about going remote practical uh, at some point and our DAG had mentioned there was a law that said something about having to do an hour of theory work before headed into practical. But when I re-looked at that, that's for electrology. So that's not applying to any of you at all. Uh, I don't think we have a school of electrology here. Um, so we did double check that. The other thing we double checked is uh, our neighboring states. 
So Utah uh, did pass some legislation allowing for remote learning for cosmetology schools. Um, and that is included in your packet. I believe it's like page 14, if you look at the bottom. Um, and the packet we're referring to, the board members have that in board pack, but every member of the public also has that. It's on our website. Uh, so you can all see that. Um, it's super vague is what we got out of that. It's very vague. Um, it pretty much says, um, let me try to pull it up. Um, but it allowed, I believe, for 50% of the curriculum uh, to be done remotely um, until I think the date on that was maybe 2021 or 2022. So it does have an end date, but it's quite far in the future. Um, it's not clear whether that allows for both theory and practical, um, but it's just this blanket uh, legislation that they put through allowing for remote learning. Um, it doesn't prohibit practical, uh, certainly, but I don't know if the schools are using it for practical as well. Okay, my, can I just my add, this is Gary. Gonna... Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, go right ahead. Chair, chairperson. I just wanted to add for California, Texas and Idaho, where we have locations, they made the accommodations during this pandemic to allow 100% flexibility for the schools, meaning practical as well as theory. Thank you, Gary. But I, I think what we're talking about now, we're, we're gonna talk about, I think the next agenda item is the temporary relief. But what we're talking about today is the, the permanent, making permanent changes. We're, we're not at the temporary. The temporary is already in the works. So we're, we're actually okay. talking, today as a hybrid committee of how we move forward and what does it look like for, for the schools to offer it as a permanent, um, um, I would say, I don't wanna say mechanism, but a permanent part of the curriculum. So, so we're not quite there yet because we, we have the research from all of the states that's offering temporary, the board has already given us that. So we know about the temporary, this is, we're discussing today permanent. I got you, thank you. Okay. Excuse me, can I ask a question, Gray? Yes. And are we approved, is Nevada approved right now for temporary practical online? Uh, or just the, temper, just the theory online? Okay, so Gary, so for those who wasn't on the, the last um, uh, meeting that we had on this past Monday, Director Landry, can you can you maybe recap, or you want to wait till we get to the next agenda item, and you can discuss where we are with the practical? It may be better to wait to discuss it the next agenda item. Okay. But what 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 was done was the board authorized the same as they had before, authorized the use of distance learning in the classrooms until the pandemic is over, or until CISLAC doesn't have any more restrictions on the classrooms. That was what was passed at this last board meeting on Monday. That, but that's what I was getting at, I'm sorry. Um, the practical is not authorized right now in Nevada, whereas in other states, they allow us that flexibility. So we need that flexibility to do practical remotely. Okay, that's Gary, that, I think that's the next agenda item. We'll discuss that right. one. Cause right. we don't That'll want to like, kind of move next... ahead of ourselves. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Director Landry. Yeah, we can discuss it in the next agenda item. That would be the perfect time because that, that is what it's about. The practical training is the next agenda item. Okay, so can I can I get some committee members some some feedback on um, where we are with where we are with the hybrid and um, can we make a recommendation and what the recommendation like to the full board so that we can move forward with the, um, what makes it difficult for me and I can only speak for me is that through the research that the staff has um, submitted to the committee, there is no permanent practical that we could find. So if we get, if, if, I mean, if any other committee member or member or school owner director 
could get that information to us so we can kind of take a look and see what it looks like. Um, we, we would need to know what it looks like and it has to be some moving parts to it. But as of now, we have not found a, uh, a state that is allowing practical permanent hybrid education. So if, if this was to move forward with our state, we would be the model state, but we don't want to be the disaster either. We want to be able to make sure that um, ultimately in the end that the, the licensees succeed. Um, it's a win-win for, for everyone. So I know we have board members on the call, I mean, on, the, on, on Zoom today. We have Lou, she's the, the, the vice chair of our committee. We just need, I, I would like for us today to make some type of decision, whether it's moving forward to the full board on theory or moving to the full board for more information. So can we, can I get some feedback, please? Well, well, for me, I think there's, I think there's two questions here. You know, I think the first question is hybrid on a permanent situation, right? Meaning long-term, meaning a totally new model for the cosmetology industry, as opposed to what we used to do where everybody comes to the school and, and we teach there. So kind of a step up into where we can um, uh, perhaps give the choice. I mean, that would be up to each school, but basically having your theory online, which is very doable, and then having your practical done at the campus. And then the second part that I'm hearing everybody ask about is during the pandemic, there is a situation where with limited capacity and the rise in coronavirus uh, amongst uh, all of us, that they're wanting to do some practical because what we found uh, originally out the gate back in March and April was that if we continued online at the pace that we were allowed to, which was 20 hours a week, potentially mm -hmm. somebody could complete all of their hours but never really do the practical. So that, I think that's something that we learned. You know, I think that that was, a. am not gonna say a mistake because that's the wrong term, but that was, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so that's what we noticed. We're like, hold on a minute. We have students that are, you know, they're, they're, we, we got to cut it back. We got to pull back because what's happening is they're going through their, their theory and they're not getting any of their practical. And that's really a, a problem because the truth is it's all new. So if you did that and you're saying, okay, well, when they come back, they're going to get their practical, but you really have to teach the whole program over because every week, everything pretty much we teach is, 50% practical. So I think that there, there is a need right now during the pandemic to uh, lift somewhat of the restriction on teaching practical. I don't know what that looks like, but I, 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 after the last meeting with the um, VOTEC, I really felt I really felt some sort of way because again, that was something that, you know, I don't think anybody considered that us as private schools, you know, we're allowed to keep our students coming, but the governor has mandated that the public school be closed. So we have students, whether it's 10 or 50, that want to be in our industry that are going to be, be, be some sort of saddled with not being able to simply because, and I get the pandemic, pandemic affects everybody, but I think that we as a board can find a solution because ultimately we have two responsibilities to protect the public, but we also have the responsibility to, you know, help our industry grow and make sure that our industry stays um, vibrant and, and active. And so we don't want to put a bad taste in anybody's mouth. Like, yeah, I went to school, but I didn't get my life, that whole thing. So I think there's two questions here. I don't know in which manner you want to address them, but I, but I do feel that there, it looks to me like, you know, there doesn't seem to be an end in sight uh, for at least six months, perhaps even a little bit longer. And so in six months, you can finish your nail tech program, you can finish an esthetician program, you could finish, you know, um, two thirds of practically of your cosmetology program online, right, in hours, 
but you don't have that practical part. And I think if we had that practical part, it would help. You know, the other thing to consider is financial aid. When you have a change in delivery, so in other words, so everybody's coming to school, um, you know, they're doing their online and then they're coming to school to be practical, right? And then there's a change in delivery where let's say that you have a class that, um, you know, has an outbreak of coronavirus. And so you take that class and you put them online, but they can really only be online for 50%, right? So they're missing that bottom half of hours and that's a change in delivery, which affects their financial aid, you know? So I think there's a lot of components here to, to what we're talking about, but I do feel like there is theory that has to do with practical and there's theory that has to do with, you know, book work, so to speak. And I think it would be, um, it would help us as a school, I think it might help if we could add some practical to the situation regarding the pandemic. And that's Thank what you, I think. Lisa. I'm going to, I'm going to step out. I need my battery charger. Hold on. But that's but, exactly but, okay. I, I just want to share this. What you're talking about, the second part of it, we're going to yeah. talk about that next, Yeah. but we need exactly. to move out of this. We need to move from this the agenda item here. And okay. that's what the hybrid education looks like. Go get your battery charger. I'll talk to some more committee, some more committee members, and we can talk about: Do we move forward with the hybrid, or we we say we're going to just table it now to next legislation, two more years? We we need some feedback to see how we're going to move forward. Can I have the other some other committee members, board members? Brian Baltazar, I, I, I don't believe I'm a committee member, but um, I do remember <laughs> Gwen asking that as many of us be here. So I just wanted to honor oh, yes. that. Um, I, I truly believe that now is the time I, that we should be incorporating and moving forward with this. Uh, what that exactly looks like, whether it be, I know um, someone had mentioned other states are just giving free reign and allowing the schools to determine and, and customize really what their curriculum is going to look like, what the, how the practical is going to be delivered. Um, I, you know, that I'm sure that is probably has, it has its benefits, but I'm sure you know some unforeseen things are going to arise from that as well, from having this unmitigated um, ability to customize however you want. Um, I really think that whatever we propose should possibly follow whatever the emergency measures are going to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, people are capping out at their hours and they're not doing any practical. I think it's really time that we incorporate it. What that limit looks like, I don't know, but I think now is the time to incorporate that and, and move forward because we don't know if this environment is going to be a year two years or if it's going to just completely shape society in general uh, from this point onward. So that, that would be my opinion. Thank you, Balthazar, board member. I appreciate that. Um, can we, can I get, um, go, go ahead. It looks like board member Stanton, you, you wanted to speak. Yes, I was just going to actually piggyback off of what Brian is saying. So I concur. I will say that. <laughs> uh, Do you for, believe for the we subcommittee? should? Um, no, I'm sorry, Kai. No, no, no. Uh, I was just going to say um, I do believe we should just go ahead and push it forward and let um, the board communicate the um, further details. That's all. Thank you. I apologize for cutting you off. Go ahead. No, no, you're totally fine. Um, so just a thought. Um, so for the subcommittee, I think last meeting I had asked you guys, um, especially specifically Gwen and Lou, if there was an appetite for doing some sort of permanent change for remote practical. And it didn't really seem like that was grabbing anybody at that time. If we're thinking though about doing some sort of change, let's say, um, you know, a permanent change though that says, hey, when we're in a state of emergency, now we can enact this remote practical. Why don't we just, we can do that. So when we submitted that item to the governor saying, hey, like we're in an emergency right now, we're not talking about this every time, but if you have a state of emergency, our hands are tied here. Like this is a practical, you know, uh, profession. If we take maybe that same language we were talking about for the emergency and change that into like a permanent regulation, it would still say, 
during a governor uh, enacted state of emergency, we can now set up criteria for remote practical learning. Maybe that's the way to go and maybe we have the board make a ruling on that. So in some ways it would be a permanent change, but it wouldn't say you can do remote practical learning all the time. It would just say it's a permanent change that you can do it when the governor has a state of emergency. That way, if we run into this bind again, the board can actually vote on allowing you to do practical. We don't have our hands bound like you all felt during this round where we can only do theory. We can't even vote to allow you all to do practical. Um, so that's just a thought. If you just wanna vote it out of here, we can talk about it at the January 11th meeting and start getting a workshop together maybe for a permanent regulation and just you know start moving forward. That is a fabulous idea. Uh, having something that automatically kind of activates whenever we have, you know, I, I, I think that's a wonderful idea. So if there is no appetite to make a permanent change, I think Leah is absolutely right. Right, I totally, I, I totally agree. But what I, I, what I'm thinking too, Leah, and we can discuss it once we are at full board. But um, I, I, I it's that 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 practical x amount of hours being done on a permanent situation. So, but if we can put something in the regulation where it states practical only during um, a disaster, the board can that, that at the time the board can make that decision. Um, but I think that moving, let's, let's move it out of committee and move it. Yeah, to I think board. that's a great idea. I agree. Yeah. Sounds good. If you guys want to okay. vote it out and Thank vote you. it on the January 11th. We're, we're going we're gonna to totally vote it that. to uh, the full board. Can Sounds I get a motion, good. please? I second that motion, but I'm not sure all the lingo that goes with that. Okay. <laughs> Is, is Leah, right, that we, we have Leah, she can help you. You can, you can, you can make the motion. Somebody has to make it and somebody has to second it. This sure. is so, board member. Oh. Tila Trimble, I think got it. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. This is Tila Trimble McCormick. I'd like to make a motion to um, move forward and push this to the full board out of subcommittee to, um, to be, um, revisited during the January 11th board meeting. Leah, did I get that date right? Yep, you did. We'll do it January 11th. Is that your motion? That's my motion. <laughs> okay. Board member so Douglas, then, uh, I second that motion. Okay, perfect. So we have a second by board member uh, Douglas. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. So we can move to the full board. Um, agenda item number three is remote practical instruction presentation by representative of Paul Mitchell School for discussion only. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi. It's been a long nine months, huh? It sure has. <laughs> Hi, I'm Annie Safadi. I'm here today with a couple of my team members, Liberty, my co-director, and uh, Brent Son, my education leader from Vegas, but also my education leader for our California schools. So thank you so much, Leah. That was my ask uh, that I was going to bring up for something to be uh, at this time, because we are talking about change in regulations, that maybe if we could change the verbiage or the wording that we were able to do practical, uh, not on a permanent, if that wasn't what you guys were going for, but to be allowed to do it uh, in emergency that we don't have to come here. So thank you guys. I'm so glad we're moving forward on that. Um, uh, Thanks uh, for you guys taking the time for us. I wasn't on the last meeting. I didn't get the link or whatever of that time, but I was able to watch the recording. And thank you, Lou, and your education leader. I think uh, the presentation uh, that she did was actually allowed everybody to kind of wrap their head around, the, you know, everybody's not in a school day to day like we are. and you know, don't know what that looks like. Yes, everybody went through school, but it might have been a while ago. And so just, it really helped us see um, 
you know, what that looks like in our schools. We also use pivot point um, and lab and zooms and all the things same way as Lou talked. Uh, but my question is, I know on the 24th of August, I mean, the 20 something like that of August, when we sent the letter to the governor, what is the status of temporary? Are we, is it ever going to be answered from him, the temporary practical or what's going on with that? Like, What's the status today of the practical? Hi, Annie, is this it, is Leah Easter. Um, hi, Leah. So it's, it's probably not looking good for us. Um, I think he signs very few. And to be fair, the one that I saw that he did sign was very legitimately like a life and death situation, which, mm -hmm. you know, while this is important enough, it's not to us, it's not quite there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I think uh, we kind of talked just a minute ago, instead of trying to pass this through as an emergency, which the governor would have to sign, we can take that same language and just kind of do it ourselves a little bit longer, a little bit more workshopping, but at least then we can have it say what we need it to say. Um, it, it was tracked, it was received by his office quite some time ago. So um, I would be very surprised if it ever gets signed. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. even today, though, if we uh, say, if everybody agrees that the thing which it seems to be everybody's moving in that direction, they want some kind of practical, it's still a ways away for that to happen, right? Is that or can we make that ha that decision quickly? Well, can we have a director Landry? Oh, sorry. sorry, Gary, go ahead. Yeah. It does take some time because the, going through the steps is like four steps that you need to go through and it does take some time you have to have public meetings and you have to bring it up before the board you have to have two public meetings i believe then you bring it up before the board then it goes over to the uh legislative committee for them to approve it so it's it's probably you know maybe six months or five months to get through all those steps but it's good to if, if you want to go forward with it and that's the if that's the direction the board wants to take then we need to get started on it and just move forward with the, with those steps. I mean, it seems that I, that is what everybody wants. So um, I've invited my uh, education leader, Kristen, as I said, to kind of give you guys a little overview of what that practical looks like and the success that these guys in uh, California. I know Gary talked about different states that he uh, has skills in and what's happening there. Uh, you know, we have Oklahoma, we have uh, California, the Paul Mitchell schools all over are doing it. And um, it's just an option that we would love to have for our future professionals. We're not trying to have them work with chemicals like color or perms or relaxers. It's so as they can still be working uh, be engaged in the classes, working with our hand dexterity, working on their foil placement, using cholesterol and gel that we, the same as we use in school. We're not using color in every class. That's, you know, the only part that they would be missing um, would be working on, you know, uh, public. This is all work done on their mannequin at home, but, you know, I'm going to turn it over to Kristen, who's the uh, our education leader that's doing that and very successfully in uh, our San Diego campus. So Kristen, take it away. Hi, thank you. Um, I First of all, I just want to say you guys are doing a fantastic job. It's been a really long nine months, eight months. Um, we've spent um, the majority of that as distance learning because um, we've had a, a lot of closures, forced closures and had no, no opportunity to do anything else. So um, we've also been able to have the opportunity to, to do hybrid. Um, so a little bit of both. Um, at first, I was a little apprehensive of the practical portion of it myself, um, simply because I didn't know, I, I had to wrap my brain around how I was gonna track it, how I was going to be able to monitor it, how clearly you can give coaching and feedback for people to, to be able to benefit from doing that, the hands-on portion, the practical portion. Um, and it has worked out amazing. Um, I do have, if I could share my screen, I do have just a couple of, of pictures um, and one very short, like 10 second video. Um, if I can share my screen, I think it will allow me to. Let's see. Okay, am I on? Yeah. Perfect. So these are, these are just a few um, pictures of, of what we have them, them submit. So this is 
just showing sectioning for what they are creating. Um, beforehand, when we would do some um, uh, the, some of the testing in in classes, we would have them recite, say, the PERM steps or the steps to a double process. And now we have them do it live online with their instructor, but also submit pictures and type out all of the all of the um, directions. So this, as you can see, is a is a color application um, to be at, with the explanation underneath. Um, and as you can see, you can clearly see where, where the sections are, are they overlapping um, and so forth. This is a double process um, happening. And again, with the, with the sectioning and the write out of what it is that they are doing. So this is how we spotlight students. So we are able to zoom in and see exactly what they are doing. Um, we will ask them, I need you to move your, move your camera a little bit. Um, we're able to look at everybody at a glance and then spotlight certain, certain students so that we can make sure that they are A, participating and B, doing the right process. Just another view of what that looks like. And then this is a short video just to see how everybody is working. Perfect. Stop share. So just a little bit of an insight of how it is. We also, we use Pivot Point. Um, we use, oh, okay. Um, we use Pivot Point. We use um, Course Key um, as well as a clock in, as a time clock um, to monitor time, as well as like, like um, I believe it was Lou said about the session tracker on Pivot Point. Um, we do every single class that has um, a portion of theory whether that is theory from the chapter out of the out of the book or theory of the subject that's being taught, just like we would in a in a classroom, um, we still follow all guidelines that has to do with um, student teacher ratios. So if there is anybody in the classroom also teaching, so doing hybrid, we have a, a teacher teaching to a class that has people in the room and also on the screen for those who are at home, whether they are being quarantined. Um, or they are in need of taking care of children that are also on hybrid or are unable to be in the building. Um, or for whatever reason, right now we're at a stay at home order in, in our state of California. So there's a lot of uncertainty out in the world in our, in our neck of the woods. Um, so we are able to, to communicate with both aspects, whether they're in the building or online with us um, on, our, on our Zoom calls. So the, the teacher that we have teaching in the building is um, visible and the sh screen is shared and everything for the people at home. But I also have teachers online with them that is monitoring all the squares, monitoring all the hands-on portions, making sure somebody didn't disappear um, or, or anything like that. We're able to offer public coaching as we would in a classroom. Um, as well as private coaching. So we do set up times after the, after the class as we would normally um, to go over what they um, need to improve on um, and so forth. So the way we started this was um, a, a care package for a lack of a better word, a care package. Everybody needed perm rods and uh, cholesterol. We needed to be able to have a safe, um, distant way of, of providing supplies that we all, we would normally supply in the building for them to take home. Um, so we created care packages and then we have them uh, stop by and they can simply leave their care package in their trunk, pop their trunk open. We can grab their trunk and have curbside, no contact refills available um, depending upon where we are with everything with cotton and foil and gel. Um, we do not do anything with actual chemicals. We um, try, we, that's, that's always been our, our guideline is future professionals, students are not professionals and should not be using professional only uh, products at home uh, because they're not there yet. 
So we um, make sure that we use cholesterol like we normally would um, in a classroom. And then when they are in the building, we have the opportunity to use professional uh, products like lightener and color and relaxers and perms. Um, so there are some things that, that are better done in the building. Um, and there are plenty of things that are, are capable of being done at home. Um, it is, I believe, to be a little bit easier if you had a, a whole class of, say, 24 people, 25 people in a classroom to one teacher. Um, things and coaching gets lost sometimes. So it, it is very nice to be able to, I can zoom into you without having to crawl over all the tripods and all the doll heads and all the people in, in the classroom. Um, I can zoom in on that person. I can search for what it is that I'm, I'm trying to coach on. Um, the, um, let's see, make sure I touched on all of the things that we talked about. Um, tracking. So what we do with tracking, um, we created, it's, it's basically a rule book that has every, it's a spreadsheet that looks like a rule book and it has all of the future professionals with their name and their student number and then dates at the top. Um, and the learning leaders that are on the call monitoring their group of, of students um, go through and they write down all of the things that each student has completed fully completed. So in, in our state the, the, for California, a completion is a score of a 100. Um, you either did it fantastic to your ability or you didn't complete the service um, or the operation. So we go through and we mark down, yes, they did um, this, this uh, double process color. Yes, they did the required foils that are, are needed. Um, and we make it to, to where we document all of that so we can sign off everything and we know exactly what they've gotten done when they've gotten it done. If they do not participate, we also have rules on how you participate in, in Zoom as well as how you participate in school, right? So we still have dress code, <laughs> you know, we still keep it as professional as we possibly can. We still have dress code. You have to participate so that you are considered actively engaged. That is, that's the guideline. You must be actively engaged. If you are not, you will be removed from the Zoom class and put in a breakout room. And then that breakout room, we um, are, you are coached on what are, what are we missing? Your camera wasn't on. I have to watch you be actively engaged all the time. Um, and, or what, you know, what, what's the challenge with um, participation? And then we go from there. They either join us back in the class from that breakout room, from that private coaching, or we will see them again tomorrow. No different than what it would be if they were in the building. Um, so that's how we, we track everything. With the tracking of the hours as well, we have multiple means of how to do that. With um, Course Key is, like I said, is, a, is an online time clock that we, that we track their time. We also pull all of the Zoom report time. They will only get exactly what they were in the class for. Um, and then we cross check all of that when it, before it goes into freedom, into fame, um, to make sure that somebody didn't clock in and disappear to go wherever they went on their own personal time, or that they are not receiving hours um, during that time frame. Um, it is extra work than it has ever been, um, but so is all of 2020. Um, let's be honest, 2020 is just made for extra work. Um, so it is, um, it's not something that, um, that like what Annie had said, it's not something that we're necessarily wanting to do permanently. Um, but as, um, I, I believe it was Gwen that stated the, the job and of what the mission statement is, is to ensure the, the health and safety of the public, as well as the education portion as well as of uh, the licensing and inspecting. Um, so to do that, it's, it's hard, obviously, in this crazy time of a pandemic to ensure that everybody can stay safely away from each other, but still get a quality education to be able to go into a salon or barbershop to provide that. Um, it doesn't, um, it, it's knowing where the industry is going, the industry has changed so much um, and it will, a lot of it will be permanent. Um, some of it will maybe not be permanent, but will be a, a very long temporary permanent. Um, and for future professionals to graduate without having that, that practical piece um, is, is detrimental to the public 
is detrimental to, to their public health as well during this time frame, um, as well as there's going to be very limited times um, that salons are going to be able to bring in assistance based on, and that's a lot of the times the next step. Where do you go after you're done with school? You are an assistant to somebody to gain additional knowledge and additional practice. Um, and a lot of, in a lot of ways that is going to be very different um, just based on space in salons, based on, on public health. Mm -hmm. So uh, this has, has been a huge game changer for us. It doesn't have to be a big thing for any, it can work for any type of school. You simply need an iPad for your educator, which you should already be doing if you're doing theory. Um, you can simply put that on a tray and prop it up high enough, they can see everything that you are doing. And if you think about what we as hairdressers do, we are, we are, we watch videos all the time, constantly. We can see what, what all of the, all of the, the people that are putting videos out, we can see what they're doing um, and they can see what we're doing. And it is a phenomenal way to get through the craziness of what 2020 has brought. Thank you, Krista. Thank I, you. I have a question. I have a question. Yes. So um, I understand that California is in a lockdown right now, but am I understanding that since the pandemic started, you guys have been allowed to do practical? We, we were not allowed to do practical for the first month that we were um, shut down in March. Okay. Um, then NACIS approved it for us for whatever your state required. So our board here did have a, we were about middle of April um, that our board had emergency session and they allowed for us to be able to do it so long as NACIS approved it. So can you explain to me the difference between um, doing practical online when the schools open mm -hmm. and then doing, of course, you know, you guys are in a shutdown, so everything's online, but, but what is the difference? How did you calibrate what was taught online when you could still come into the school for practical? What was that what was that determining factor that you used or how did you go about deciding which was which? So we had, we went through a few different things, you know, as, as we've all done through this time frame. you try stuff, sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't, you know? Um, so we went through a few different things. We started off doing just state board. So we did all theory from pivot point and then the hands-on portion that we did was just state board. Um, the state board procedures over and over and over again. Um, and then that grew into, okay, now that we have all of the things that we need, we can do a perm together with perm rods, you know, um, and then that grew into, into doing all the different things. We, we have a makeup program and a barbering program and a cosmetology program. So there are some things that we only are saving for in the building, like shaving. I don't want to teach somebody how to do shaving with a straight razor on a doll head at their house as an example, you know, um, not everybody has the proper area to do, um, say, uh, makeup on a person, you know, you can't do makeup on a doll head to get proper instruction on what that looks like. Um, and not everybody has somebody in their home that they are able to do that. So that we kept certain things, um, makeup, shaving, it was really makeup, shaving and um, artificial nails that we kept out of the list and everything else we have, we have been doing online. Does Lou, that answer your question? For that, it's also for the social distancing. So uh, only half can be in the building and half can be, uh, half can be at home or whatever uh, to allow for the engagement as opposed to eight hours or five hours at home just on a theory portion, right? or when we're allowed to have service guests because of the reduced capacity of your building too, then when they're in the building, a lot of the practical that we want it to be is more of them working on their service guests, but maybe those uh, specialty classes that we do. So, you know, one day a week, they're in a cutting specialty in theory, right? And then the other day they're in the cl clinic classroom doing service guests so trying to really when we were allowed service uh, guests in San Diego because again they're a little different than here and then the same here with a capacity reduction it's that trying to be when you're in the building is for guests and when you're out of the building they could be doing uh, you know the practical classes online. 
you know, or um, when people like Kristen says, and like here, when we're getting cases every day, and there's going to come a point where possibly there's a campus outbreak, and or you know, or people are on quarantine because maybe they don't have symptoms, but they were around somebody or, you know, and now they need to be home for two weeks that they can follow along the classes um, and be engaged as opposed to just a, a, a demo from a learning leader or being on pivot point watching videos and taking, you know, so to have, uh, just like they were in school, to have that um, variety of classes, you know. So otherwise, like, you know, we all know theory is not just the pivot point or the milady portion. There's theory in everything we do, but it's hard to then not have the practical application once you've given the, the theory portion. So I agree. Annie, I have a question, um, I think, for you. I got a couple questions and I got some extra work for you now, Leah. <laughs> You will make do Gwen, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking okay. notes. You gonna have a lot of information to get back to us. All we right, appreciate no you though. Thank um, you. A, cu a couple questions. I'm gonna start off with Annie. When you're doing because your theory in California, because your the schools in California and the laws in California states that you can do the 100 percent of the training if necessary online, which is the the theory and the practical, am I correct? Currently they're allowed uh, to do 75% of their theory online, right, Kristen? 75% uh, of our hours are yeah. allowed to be done online, but that is approval, a special approval through NACIS. Yeah, but the permanent approval is 50% for theory yes. uh, because our San Diego school have went through the process and they can do permanent hybrid and 50% of that can be online. But in the current situation with the pandemic, they're allowed to do 75%. Okay, so that student would still have to somehow. So are you, so even though you're not, you're shut down, we're hoping to be open soon so that the other students with the last 25%. Yeah, currently in California, um, the salons and everything are closed, but schools are allowed to be open. So what our uh, San Diego school is doing right now, we don't, we're not taking service, uh, service guests, right? To limit that number of people through the building. Um, but the future profession or the students have the option to be on permanent uh, distance learning or for those students that maybe are closer uh, to graduation or whatever, or students that feel still comfortable and wanna be in the building because the school's allowed to be open, we have that option right now. So what Kristen showed you, some people, the class like this, some people are online watching it and some people are at home and they're doing the same class because again, we have the capacity uh, to have the cameras on the, instructor and seeing the demo up close and then we would have then one or two or de depending how many students are online uh, and in class because they can just like Lou said last time the person if they want to be in the classroom they can be sitting in theory the, the teacher's doing the lesson the instructor's doing the lesson anyway or you have people at home so they're working right now they're working both that people are in the building, people are out the building. The students were given the, the kind of opportunity to make that choice for themselves. But there comes a point for us as administrators that depending on what the situation is happening in your school, depending on how many um, cases or whatever's going on, do we determine it's an outbreak and then we're going to close and not have anybody in the building, you know? so. Everything's a day to day, but that's their current situation. I just wanted to know so we can, because because what we're going to be looking at is like a little bit different from California's the way yeah. that California has their system set up, which I think is a great system. Mm -hmm. I mean, the students need to. I totally agree. Is to continue with their training, mm -hmm. and we have to figure out, and what we have to figure out what it looks like to the advantage of the student as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, so. 
Yeah, when we went into this in the beginning, we all thought it was only going to be a couple of weeks. So that was fine to do theory and videos or, yeah. you know, live demonstrations. But when you're looking at nine months in and some of your students that, you know, are getting to the end of their time and they've not really had their hands that much in hair or whatever. It's like, we gotta, uh, we gotta be able to give them more. So. No, I know. I, I, I think we all get it. And I think if we're all concerned because I see if there's some school owners and directors on the, on the call as well. So um, I think we, everybody's kind of pretty much to me um, understands that we have to, it, the time is here. I mean, the time is now that we have to put something in place, which is a good thing. But when we're putting something in place that's permanent, it's going to take a little bit more, not just, well, thank you for the creativity, but it's going to take some hard structural facts. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I would like for Leah, in my opinion, um, this is what I, I would need from you, Leah, please, for the sure. all board members before the next board to receive all the procedures um, that's being done in order for um, a student to become licensed. Uh, because we have some board members that's not quite familiar with all the procedures um, that needs to be done. And then that would help me determine in my mind, what are some of the good procedures to be done at home? Um, during the, the emergency, because we need to put something in place for an emergency, I told you. I agree. We need the insurance that we can continue to do business and students can you know, make money. All the corporate. Um, so if you could get me, Leah, uh, mm -hmm. that information and we go over it. And then if, um, if it looks like this, all the procedures and the staff said everything looks good from, from nail technology, esthetician, cosmetology, um, any of those licenses, even the, the, um, the hair design, because some schools are still offering hair design. Those procedures need to... The, the board members need to know what it takes. They still need to know that the students are gonna to have to perform those procedures as well. Okay. Okay. That, that okay. I think that's everything else I like, I, I really do. Um, we need to, the, 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 I think the staff um, needs to be looking at how they can monitor this as well. Um, yeah, um, you can, there is a process. So, so if you could, if you could maybe put us some, we, I would like to see, excuse me, I need you to mute your phone, please. Or you mute your computers. Thank you. So, so if you could put that together for us, Leah, um, and give it to us by next board meeting before, before the, the board meeting, because this information that we're going to, they're going to be able to, uh, take a good look at and, um, so we can be able to move forward with this. So this won't be something that we keep postponing for the next board meeting, because that could very well happen. January meetings come, if the time come and, and, and the board is not prepared to vote on it, that means we will have to call emergency board meeting or it won't happen to the next board meeting. And then Director Landry already said, it's like a five, six month period. So we need to make try to make every single milestone so that we can be able to get it within that time frame. If not, it might be a whole year. Right. It, it right. could very and well think, be if they're if they're not informed. Can right. you can and you I speak to that, Leah? Sure. So uh, you know, I would be working closely with the AG's office. Uh, Justin, our DAG, and I have already spoke. The two of us are pretty new to regulation making, but we know that there's a workshop associated, so we're already kind of reviewing that. Um, one thing that might help put everyone's mind at ease too is if we're looking at a permanent regulation that pretty much says, hey guys, the governor has a state of emergency board, now you can allow remote practical learning. You really don't need to know all the specifics 
of what you're going to allow and not allow to get this regulation off the ground. You just need to have that door open. You know what I mean? So the reg is just saying, hey, we're putting in an exemption. You guys can figure out when that state of emergency comes what you want to do. Because like everyone's saying, one thing we've all learned in 2020 is we think something's a great idea and we realize later it's not, we have to change it. So if we get too specific in our actual law, we're going to be locked in and we don't want that. We want it to be vague so that you guys no, can no, legislate no, no, on Leah. this. So. No, Leah, I, I think you're misunderstanding me because I'm going to have a problem if I don't know what the procedures are. I'm going to be totally honest up front with, with, uh, with everybody because I, that's just who I am. So if I don't get to see what the procedures are, because once we put something in law, mm -hmm. I understand that very well. It's going to be law and it's going to be up to anybody's discretion. And when the student is doing over half their training and they're going to be doing it at home and they're going to be doing it online, we need to have some parameters before we go out the gate. Sure. Yeah, it's no problem. We'll get you that uh, okay. sometime before January 11th. Okay, good. Yeah, we, we're going to need parameters. We got to know what we're, I mean, as a board, we're making decisions and we're making decisions on people's livelihood too. So, I mean, we can, we're not going to let it be free for all out the gate. I mean, period. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair to the schools. I don't think it's fair to the students. So I just think we just need to just let the board members see what the procedures are. And if we want to say that all these procedures except these procedures can be done, we don't have to list them, I don't think. I think we just have to be able to say, so when, when it's approved, we don't have you don't have to monitor all the schools and what they're teaching. Everybody knows what can be done online and what can't be done online. So Gwen, like for an example, are you saying like no chemicals, right? So you can do hair design you can do up styling, but you can't do any chemicals. So no relax. Well, just like, is that what you're saying? No, kind of sort, kind of sort of. Right? This is just like what, with I think Kristen said that there are certain things that they can, mm -hmm. cannot do at home. Am I right, Kristen? Yes. Can you absolutely. hear me? Absolutely. Yes. See, there's some. Yes, there are certain things that it just it it's it's not conducive to their education. Right. Well, maybe Kristen can share her list with us and then individually we can, you know, create our own list. And then when we have that meeting, we kind of have Leah's information and then we all have our take on it. And then together we could maybe create something where it outlines the parameters for the pandemic but in, in a way, you could also outline the parameters for the future, you know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying just exactly. do it. Let's just get it done yes. so that we don't have to be going back and forth. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Yeah, if we can just get it done now and the board members can get it and they don't have to have a lot of questions about it because they understand what the procedures are. Right, right. Because if they don't know what the... Excuse me a second, Annie. If they don't know what the procedures are, then they're going to be like, okay, what is this? What did it take to do this? Right. What did it take to do that? And then we can say all these except, but like yeah. Leah said, we can do that at another time, but we all have an understanding and keep passing this through because we're not going to, it's going to, we don't want, once they have it over to the public meetings and all that workshop stuff, we all have to be on the same accord. Yeah, and you guys, if there's anything that you need, uh, you, you have my email, everything, you can reach out and we'll get you any information from yeah. our schools. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, so, so Annie, if you could get that information, some of that, those procedures to Leah to even help her yeah. so that everybody in Lucy, if you want, all the other schools, if you want to send in, you know, or, or, or maybe Leah, I'm not trying to make Leah's work real hard because she has a lot. Um. But Leah, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. And I think I will. I'll definitely uh, circle back with Annie and maybe even Gary. I think he mentioned he's in California as well and see kind of what they're doing. Just so, I mean, if we know it's working for California, I'm sure it'll be working for us. Or if, you know, there's something that stands out, we can change it for Nevada. Okay. Yeah, yeah so that we can have a list of things that these are things that, and then maybe we can agree and say that maybe something that's not on that list should be put on that list. So that when we're working it out in regulation, you know, everybody knows, but this is what we can do when something happens and this is how it's being done. You know, 
we already have the online systems for us for the theory part but we have to create the practical part because it's never really been it's never been done in our state so we got to make sure that we do probably a, you know i'm sure it's gonna be some tweaking along the way but we have to have a platform if we're going to put our neck out there and say we got a hybrid permanent situation here that anytime something happens and it's a disaster Nevada's already has taken the steps in its law. We don't have to do anything temporary. It's going to be permanent. And so any other board members have any other questions? Anybody else have any concerns or anything before we move forward to the next one? No, I think that this is Kai Stanton. I think the presentation um, was good. Thank you for taking the time to research um, all of our questions and the information accordingly. Um, that said, uh, the, pep, the coming on time and being um, very, very thorough with the information was absolutely amazing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Is board member Douglas, Douglas, I second that. That was very nice. And Brian Baltazar, thank you, Christina. I, I definitely echo their sentiments. That was incredibly thorough and it really answered more questions than I than I even had. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate your time. Gwen, are you frozen or are you with us? I think your connection's been a little spotty. Um, if she is gone, uh, that leaves uh, Miss Lou Suarez as our new <laughs> chair. If you wanna continue on with the meeting, feel free. Sorry, my dog jumped in my room. Um, okay, so we're gonna go to the, to the next, um, well, I guess does anybody, Annie, does, do you want to, does anybody want to hear from Liberty and uh, Brent? Um, I think uh, Liberty's got something that she wants to add. Sure. I mean, I think we've discussed, you know, a uh, majority of the, the things that I had on, on my list. You know, I'm happy to hear that we're moving in a direction where, um, you know, we're, we're all on the same page. You know, uh, as it's been said, you know, nobody wants to change the way we've been uh, working as a cosmetology school, we absolutely understand the quality of education, um, but we have to adapt. You know, we, we have to be able to adapt and we have to move quickly. It's very difficult as a school administrator to be able to respond to student concerns, teen concerns, uh, parent concerns when, when I'm very limited um, and I don't have the resources to be able to do that. The one thing that I will say, though, um, is that I really encourage all of us as schools, as school owners, directors, administration, education team to maybe collaborate together on a call. Um, before we go to the board or without the board. So that way we can all hear each other's concerns because I know we're going through the same struggles. You know, um, yes, we are friendly competitors, but at the same time, we're a family at this, you know, because we're one industry and we, we're all passionate about the same thing. So I'd really love to invite us to all be on a Zoom call like this so we can hash it out and talk about uh, some of the, the, the challenges and the struggles and the fears and the celebration and victories we are seeing um, so that when we are talking to the board and we present it, we have a better, um, uh, an, an idea. You know, I, I understand that maybe some of the smaller schools may feel intimidated by all of the Zooms and the movements and the changes, and some of the bigger schools might be trying to adapt a lot faster, but how can we compromise and work together? So I just want to ex uh, extend that invitation. I'd love to connect with, with, with you and your teams. Um, but, you know, again, from a school perspective, you know, I'm just asking that we, we try to put this in motion. I like exactly what Leah said is what I had on my list. If we're not moving to move practical permanent, um, so that's written in the law, then please consider changing the wording so that whether it's in a pandemic or in a state of emergency that maybe even state board declares, um, that we have flexibility to make changes without having uh, to, to wait. So that's really all I wanted uh, to add. Thank you, Liberty. And I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to give you the ball on that to try to contact the schools and 
and set up a meeting. So this way we do, we're all on the same page. And like you said, we can hash it out prior to us coming so that we could be a little bit more specific about what our needs are for our students. Exactly. Okay, great. So then I think we're moving on to, is it F, Leah? Uh, comments from the hybrid education subcommittee discussion? I think we're actually on, um, we're on number four, um, review of remote theory learning. I don't think there's a ton to touch on there because we kind okay. of already looked at it. Um, but we do have, just so everyone is aware, Utah did um, make actual changes to their regs. The change is very vague, it's just one paragraph and it does expire in July of 2022. Um, but you can see kind of, I guess, where we're headed, right? It, it's vague enough, it opens the door for them to allow for remote practical, but it doesn't get so specific that it ties their hands any. So I guess we'll try to kind of follow their lead and get something like that with Nevada. Okay, do we need to read that reg or we can just kind of- You can just it. move on to number five when you're ready to go. Okay, we'll move to five. Uh, discussion of remote theory learning no, programs there. that are accept acceptable. Okay. Wait. Okay. Oh, Thank good. You. Thank God you're back. <laughs> okay, sorry. Where we at? Was that me or you? We're on number five now, Gwen. Um, <laughs> Leah, yeah, you did there. this to me. I know you did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Lou, Lou did a great job on item four, so you're good to go, Gwen. <laughs> So what we do, love, what we do lose, what I missed. Um, we you talked know, about we talked about Utah and that it's limited and vague, and uh, that that's probably we should adopt something similar to that so we can kind of, you know, go from it what we need to. And then okay, you came out until we're at number going. five. We're at number five discussion of remote theory learning programs that are acceptable to the Nevada Board of Cosmetology Hybrid Education Subcommittee uh, for discussion and possible action. So the Nevada Board of Cosmetology Hybrid Education Subcommittee will discuss various remote theory learning programs and to vote possible recommendations, those programs to the full uh, board. So who would like and now for Gwen and, and Lou, this is something that you asked to be on an upcoming meeting. I talked to Gary and Adam about this. So Gary uh, Landry, feel free to jump in if you'd like to. Um, but the board staff is open to anything that can keep time and allow you as instructors to make sure that the students are actually participating and they're not falsely clocking in, that sort of thing. Um, the board just felt whatever you guys uh, have experience with would be fine with us. And if there's a list of items that you think um, like Pivot Point, Milady, um, whatever has an online platform uh, to just recommend that to the full board and we're fine to move forward with it. So, so for me, like, I, go I'm ahead. sorry, uh, board member Bramo, that's kind of like what I was thinking is that we give you a list of um, those, you know, those uh, online systems that's being used, at, you know, nationwide, you know, nationally. I think that would be a good idea for us to kind of have some parameters and say, you know, so it won't be just a system that you've made up and has no substance. At least you know that in the law, it requires the students to have textbooks and all those things that we already have in the law. So at least if we kind of kept it the same, it's not a textbook anymore, it's just an electronic textbook. So it needs to come from a reputable company. Right. And I think that's to your point, Gwen, that you had made about ever, having everyone even know what procedures are done to get out of cosmetology school, right? It's just having this prepared and that if you have 10 on your list and the school wants to use an 11th, then the board can say, okay, we've reviewed it. That 11th one is also good. But if we already yes. have a list, it should be easy to pull from. Sounds yeah, good. I think so, Leah. Yeah, it was something I was getting ready to say about that too. Um, that's okay. Go. Are there any you guys want to throw out there that we can bring before a full board or do you just want to table this and have the whole thing before the full board? I mean, it's up to you. We already kind of identified, I think, Pivot Point and Milady. You want to um, have some more? You guys maybe give um, um, Leah email her recommendation. Madam President, uh, this is Adam Higginbotham, Deputy Director. Hi, Adam. Uh, hey, uh, we may want to look at the criteria of why you're approving those two programs. 
um, to refrain from creating state law that would only highlight those two programs and prohibit other programs. Oh, so we shouldn't say that though? You wanna have something like that where you, where the board, if you're gonna do online learning, then you have to submit what you're gonna be um, utilizing to the board, to the staff, you wanna do it like that? Correct. Uh, in the light of occupation licensing reform, that type of law and that type of structure of only saying two companies would be a monopoly type law that we probably wouldn't want on our books. I can see that. Okay, so I'm good with them submitting that their, their um, curriculum that they're gonna be utilizing if they're gonna utilize um, hybrid learning must be, curriculum must be approved by, by staff. Correct. There's some type of structure that would no, allow like the criteria like of that. why you that's, all that's like good. I, I of why it. you all like that. Yeah, correct. No, I think so, Adam. You're right. You have to look out for us. And, and the, the thing that, that that'll do is once we have a couple of systems approved, then schools can adopt those systems easily because they know it's already been approved. If they want to come up with some new system or there's a new system that's out, they could then submit that to the board and, and board staff will review and make sure it's all compliant with what's what's already been approved previously. So, so does it sound like we need to outline parameters of what that looks like, be it whatever company you use? Like, should they all have a tracking system, for example? You know, should every, anybody that's doing an online platform include in their kit the option to purchase a tablet, like like an outline like that, or just, it would just be submitted to the board and the board would then decide um, whether or not it was acceptable. And I guess I have a second question to that, to the schools who are online now with us in Zoom, what, what exactly is everybody else using? I know that, you know, Paul Mitchell is using Lab and, and Gwen, I know you're using Milady. Is anybody using some something else other than that? I'm just curious. I think, you know, when you look at the NACIS recommendations or requirements, or I've got an email here on Arizona, um, and the, you know, the kind of wording is that uh, the school will report student hours if you had and as you have to in the past. And then they've kind of gave all the different ideas, you know, not every, uh, Google Classroom, FaceTime, Milady, Pivot Point, you know, uh, Zooms. So they've kind of gave a broad idea. I can share some of this and, you know, uh, email, send it over to Leah uh, of a couple of the things that I have surrounding. But again, it's in NACIS, they have a similar, yeah. you know, what their guidelines were. So... Obviously that's during the temporary, but it's just, you know, so as everybody knows that they have to be tracking it somehow, yeah. Right, I, I think if we um, actually um, kind of take uh, Leah information from NACIS, because it, if you're doing hybrid, it has to be approved by NACIS anyway. So, so, or any accreditation agency, I'm sure. So there's other agencies out there yeah, if, just to see what their guidelines are mm -hmm. and we can maybe kind of just yeah. adapt that. At least we'll have a map. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. And I, I think Adam's point was clear too, right? Like if yeah. you're choosing places like Milady because they're offering things like you can see the students, you can track the hours, it would essentially be that with whatever program you have. So yeah. we'll get maybe a pool of them and just come up with what do they all have in common? So that yeah. works out. Right. And then you just know what schools are using, what programs, or they have to submit it to you, you stick it in their file or whatever. You know, at least we'll, right. you'll know that it's something that has been already approved by the board. Yep. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Luz, finish up. Okay. Okay, it works better when you're not muted. Okay, section, uh, selection of future hybrid education subcommittee meeting dates for discussion and possible action. So I, I know we were, I, I heard January, do we need to, are we going to wait till then to meet or should we meet prior to that? 
I would, um, Mrs. Leah Easter again, I'm sorry. You might want to meet after January 11th because I believe that's when we have that board meeting where they're, pro I mean, I'm sure certain the board will uh, push through moving forward with the temporary, I'm sorry, a permanent regulation. Um, but at least then you'll know by the 11th. Uh, the office is closed on the 18th and there is another meeting on the 25th. But other than that, if you guys have any dates that you'd like, I can put it on the calendar. There's a meeting on the 25th of December? Uh, of January. Oh, okay. I was January. like, yeah. Loose week. Somebody <laughs> said that last meeting, okay? It, yeah, that's a popular comment. Well, um, if you're seeing the 11th, then would it be, um, I mean, could we have it on the 12th or the 14th? Can we, can we do Let's it? Let's do the, we need to do another meeting right after the meet, at the, after the I, board I meeting. Yeah. You guys want to do the 14th then, Thursday? Yeah. That's fine for me. Yeah, me too. If you guys could just vote on it, we can do that. Yeah. And I just wanted to make mention, if you need to meet before then, you don't have to meet as the, as the hybrid education subcommittee. You can meet as a group of schools, getting your ideas together for the board meeting. It doesn't have to be the hybrid education committee. It can just be a, a group of schools meeting, meeting together. We should do that too. So yeah. I won't have 101 questions on the day. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely. Liberty, I think you're going to take that on, right? Yeah, I had I had proposed that or, uh, or yeah. that so that all the schools we could get together uh, and collaborate. How can I get the contact information for all of the schools without having to call each school individually? Is there the state board have email addresses? I'll send the email address to you, Liberty, the list of schools and what their email addresses are. Okay. Those are not necessarily the owners. Those right. are the primary contacts that we have. But if you send it to those people, they can get it to the owners and get it, get all the information to them. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. And not to be lame, but just because I'm standing in for Justin, as a word of caution, the schools can meet all they like. I um, just make sure the board doesn't show up in quorum format. Um, so Gwen and Lou, you're fine. I just don't you know, don't be rude, but don't invite Brian and Kai and Tila Trell just because I don't want you guys oh, to- Oh, Leah, you know you're rude. <laughs> I know, sorry, sorry, everybody. Rude, okay. But I, I think we as schools, we do need to get together so that we can, you know, help get this moving forward after the, the, the board meeting, because then that's when we're gonna have to start putting like the meat and, put, and potatoes together. Okay, so- Please. Uh, <laughs> So Liberty, I mean, sometime next week is great for uh, for me. Yeah, that works for me. The sooner, the better. The sooner we can start, you know, because we're going to have exchange of ideas and information. And like I said, you know, more than ever, we need to come together as school administrators and owners and help each other. You know, that we're, we are completely open to share. I, I understand, you know, our goal is to not... Um, have anybody feel intimidated in this situation, whether you're a single standalone school or you're a part of a larger network, we need to come together and brainstorm and share ideas and collaborate. You know, we're all going through the same difficulties, the, uh, the, the same struggle. So why not come together and find solutions to help each other, you know, um, to get through this time and to grow our industry for the future. So I, uh, I will definitely send that email out as soon as I get everybody's contact and the sooner we can um, collaborate together, the better. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay, so and Gary, then, I mean, because yep. I, I don't know, Leah, because you might have to answer this. Well, if it wouldn't be a problem for me to sit in and get my comments on the meeting on something that we're going to have to vote on, would it? No, it would not. Uh, as long as as long as you don't have a quorum, as long as you don't have four people, that's what we worry about. And I'd rather not have more than one person. <laughs> if it's a school meeting, you're a school owner, you're the only school owner on the board, that would be fine. Not okay. having others, other board members there is what we're trying to avoid. And Leah okay. brought up a great point about, about restricting that. Right, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so I, I would be happy to participate. And so, you know, and put in my input. And what I, 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 I mean, we all have our own input. So at the end of the day, we're all have the same goals. Okay, Luce, it's your meeting. <laughs> Um, so now we are, um, you're going to want to call for a vote on that January 14th meeting. Oh. Okay. So can we have a vote on the January 14th meeting? 
This is Kai Stanton. I'd like to make a motion to implement the January 14th at 9 a.m. for the next hybrid meeting. Do we have a second? This is Taylor Tom McCormick. I second that. So, Gwen, now it's official. Oh, it's no, all in favor. Say all in favor. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> I feel like it's my first day at cosmetology school. Okay. I know. Well, you have one more time. step. Any opposed? <laughs> Is it any opposed? any opposed? I don't think so, but. Any opposed? Okay, now you're official. Now we're official. Now you're okay. official. So the meeting is scheduled for the 14th. Mm -hmm. um, okay, E, comments from the general public for discussion only? This is Jan Garrett D. Simone from the Clark County School District up at SECTA Cosmetology. First of all, I'd just like to thank all of you for your diligence and hard work. And yes, we are all in this together. Um, but I do want to express that um, without the governor granting us an opportunity to be remote, um, our students will not be able to finish uh, the hours that they need. And so we are hoping that other school owners or some of you may have some ideas that will help us uh, save our students. They've worked very, very, very hard. They are seniors in high school and they are, they could actually, they have enough hours that they could actually get a hair designer license or a nail license. I will tell you that our group of teachers has express that we do not want to put our name on a student if we feel that they are not prepared to not only protect the public, but to succeed in the profession. However, um, during this pandemic crisis, I think we need to, six months is too late for a lot of our students um, without some type of hands-on engagement. I think strictly book work or being put on the sidelines, I think uh, even in the private school setting, you will see a tremendous amount of your students that fall away from this licensure opportunity because not only do they get bored, but they feel defeated. And so I'm very disappointed that the governor has not stepped up to um, answer our requests. Um, once again, I realize that it is not something we want to do long-term. However, under this extreme situation that is crippling our state and our country, I think we need to push something forward. It's, it's no one's fault. And it's just a situation that I believe the students who, whether they're in a private school or a public school setting, those students who have a passion and a drive to succeed in our profession are going to further their education. And let's face it, most of that advanced education is through webinars. Um, and so I think our young professionals their life will forever be changed. Um, I think remote learning will become um, a priority and not just something that sits by the sidelines. So I really appreciate you guys looking at um, putting something in place for hybrid. Once again, I do believe nothing takes the place of a practical uh, hands on environment, but I do think that some theory and some remote hands-on engagement is critical to moving our profession forward. So I thank a, you for listening to me. How many students are we talking about? Uh, we currently have 73. And how many of those 73 are, are going to be graduating this year? All 73. The ones that will be very effective. Yeah. All 73? Correct. We have 73 seniors currently. But I, but I believe already, uh, Luce, hi, Miss Jan. 
Hello. I, I believe that um, you're already on place, going to be placed on our, our January uh, agenda. Am I Correct. right, Leah? Yes, she's on the January agenda, so we can maybe try to come up with. Uh, yeah, we're going to try to come up with something seniors. as a board. So but that, I would that, like to see the board and Gary take some more aggressive actions with the governor. I think he needs to realize, I mean, when you read the news and you see that the general public will not have access to the vaccine, probably maybe even summer, and you're talking about the hurting that will take place once the vaccine is available, we're not looking at a short-term situation right. here. Um, we really need to do what's best. I mean, all I would think every private school is going to be facing that same issue very soon. So how do you survive financially? We don't have a financial burden, but how are the private schools going to put students on the sidelines and then enroll new students? How do you manage all that? Because, um, that's a big concern. I mean, how many students can you have on the sidelines and how many new ones can you enroll on the IFCOM that you're going to open April 15th or June 1st? I mean, at some point, the breaks are going to have to come on for everyone. There will be no new enrollments because what happens when we do come back full time, how do you have the place in which to educate them all. I mean, your Thank numbers you. are limited no matter what, whether it's capacity of the building or staff. So at some point you will be just as impacted as I am. But well, thank I you, Ms. Jan. Financial burden. Thank you, Ms. Jan, for your comment. But I, I, I think that we all are feeling the same way and, and I appreciate your comment. I'm sure we all appreciate your comment because you know, we're all in this together, you know, so, um, but I do want to say that um, I could talk to Director Landry after this meeting and, and we could see um, what is it that we could do to try to, to see, I mean, maybe make some phone calls if we have to, but with the students and with the Clark County School District for now, because we can speak just for right now, I guess, you know, sometimes it's not even right now, um, what we can do to help those set the 70 plus students is a lot of students. So um, I'm sure we will be able to, as a board and staff, get through this, hopefully during that time at the next board meeting. But in the meantime, you're absolutely right. I, I will reach out to my executive director um, today and see what we could possibly do to try to see where it's at, Leah, maybe the governor, maybe I could try to make some phone calls. You guys can try to make some phone calls as well. You know, but if everybody started making some phone calls to the governor's office, then the governor might pick, he might pick it up. So um, we, can, we can try that route because I know it's desperately um, something that we need to take a look at if we're not gonna get a, a vaccine administered to the general public to the summer. I mean, it's gonna be a, a long cold spring, winter and spring, you know? So we, I, I, I get it, I, I totally do. So. Thank you, everybody. Any other board members or anybody have? It's your meeting, Luce. Okay, so um, does anybody else have any comments? No? Okay. So then uh, we are at the section. I lost my section. Sorry. Um, adjournment. Uh, are we adjourning? Is that what we're doing now? I need some guidance here, guys. Well, I think it's You're right here. If it there's says, no more comments. Yeah, as long as there's no more comments from the subcommittee members now. Yeah. Is there any more comments from the subcommittee members? No comments? Okay, then uh, I guess we can go for adjournment. You just have to right? call for a motion and then you're done. Yep. Uh, call for a motion.
that there are what? What am I calling a motion for? I need an outline. You, I don't know if you know uh, that. So, but I hi, need an that's outline. okay. This is my <laughs> Stanton. I, work. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make a motion to close the meeting for December 10th, 2020 at 9 a.m. Uh, to be adjourned. It, do I have a second? Douglas board member, I second that motion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, then I guess we are adjourned officially. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for putting up with me. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs> you too. Bye. You too.